Welcome to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the Arcadm TIG 200. This is a sponsored video. They sent me this machine and wanted me to do a little tutorial on it. So here we go. The TIG 200 is a pretty portable little unit. It comes with an adapter plug to go from 120 to 220 volts and the strap for carrying it around. It's about 9 inches tall, a little over 5 inches wide, and 17 inches long. And it comes with a WP17 torch and a couple of attachments for it. You can get little kits for it with glass uh, nozzles instead of these pink ones and all sorts of upgrades. So if you want to get a cheap torch and make it nicer, you can always do that. There's no foot pedal, but you can get one for it. And then it comes with the stick welding electrode holder, the gas hose for the argon, the ground clamp, and last but not least, a little user manual. Looking at the control panel on the welder, we have our main adjustment knob here that controls our amperage. I'm plugged into 220 as indicated by this light here. So I have 170 amps available to me in stick mode and 200 amps available to me in TIG mode. If you were plugged into a 120 volt circuit, it would be highlighted over here and you wouldn't have quite as many amps available to you. Going down below we have our welding mode button which allows us to go from stick, TIG 2T, and TIG 4T. And then there's other two buttons. If you go back to stick they don't do anything. But if you're in TIG mode you can set some preferences like the downslope of the current when you let off on the control the post gas, so when you let off the control how long the shielding gas flows and you want the shielding gas to have a little bit of a post flow time so it it shields the weld from oxygen when it's really hot. If the oxygen gets in there it can corrupt the weld and then finally we have our current adjustment. And then from there you can also press the control mode and change it from panel to remote. So if this was plugged into a foot pedal you could use that as the control. Going around to the back of the machine, we have our main on-off switch here and our inlet for the shielding gas. If you plan TIG welding, you're going to need to purchase a tank of argon and a regulator, but it comes with a hose to connect it. The main advantage of TIG welding, in addition to the extra control you have, is that the shielding gas provides a smooth, clean weld with no flux to clean off. When you stick weld, there'll be a glass-like flux that has to cool, and then you can chip that off and clean your weld. There are several pieces to a TIG torch that need to be assembled correctly. This is a WP17 torch body. This is the end cap, collet, collet body, nozzle, and tungsten. We can start by screwing in the collet body, and then we can insert the collet from the back and push our tungsten through the center there. And then we can install our nozzle and make sure it's fully seated and then we can partially install the end cap and get it started and then we can adjust our our tungsten stick out length a good general rule of thumb is to have the stick out be no wider than the inside uh, diameter of the pink nozzle and so that looks about right and we can go ahead and tighten the back end cap and when you tighten the end cap It'll tighten up the collet and lock the position in place of the tungsten. To set up the machine for TIG welding steel, we'll need to take our ground clamp and plug that connection into the positive side. And then we'll take our wire that goes to the little switch and connect that and screw that in. And then we got this hose fitting here and this will be for our shielding gas get that in there and you can use Teflon tape to get a better seal. I've had pretty good luck without it and I've sometimes sprayed some soapy water there and to test for leaks and hardly ever have them. And then we'll plug the main connection for the TIG torts into the negative terminal and then we should be all set up to TIG weld. The 2T and 4T TIG modes refer to how this switch affects your machine. 
In 2T mode, when you press the switch down, the amperage is activated, and when you release, the amperage is stopped. 4T mode is a little more complicated, and when you push this down, the high frequency is initiated, and that goes until an arc is stabilized, and when you release it, the amperage ramps up to the amount set on the panel and it reaches its peak, and from there it will continue welding until you press this again, which initiates the downslope sequence, and then when you release it one more time, the post flow sequence is initiated. 2T is really useful for doing smaller, shorter welds, and 4T is recommended for doing long runs. This chart in the owner's manual helps to illustrate the 4T mode. When you press it down once and hold it, it initiates the high frequency current which starts and stabilizes the arc. When you release it, the current ramps up and holds this peak until you press it one more time and then it begins the downslope and when you release it, then the post flow gas is initiated. So 4T is 4 touch, pressing the switch down, switch goes up, switch goes down, switch goes up. It's important to have a nice tip on your tungsten when you're welding. A good tip provides arc stabilization and gives you an accurate weld. You can buy tungsten grinders or you can grind them on a, a normal stone wheel, but you want to grind them. If the wheel's spinning this way, you want to grind it like this so that the grooves made by the stone are going the direction that the electricity will be traveling. If you have the tungsten perpendicular to the grinding wheel, the grooves will be going the opposite way and it can destabilize your arc. I like to take the torch and do a little practice run before I start welding. Just take it and run it along where I'm going to go. And that way I make sure that I'm comfortable and that the torch isn't going to get caught up on anything. And then I like to have a little bit of an angle pointing to the direction I'm going to travel. I'm going right to left, so I angle the torch head that way. And then there's, it could also be flat to the table or the other way. And I like to go 45 degrees in there to get a good distribution of heat between the top plate and the bottom. And from there, I like to bring my filler rod in at a narrow angle and wait for the keyhole to develop on the base material and give it a dab and then keep it moving. I just got done doing some test welds with the new machine and I'm pretty pleased with how these plug welds turned out and the longer runs turned out pretty alright too I normally weld with a foot pedal and not a button so there's a bit of a learning curve but overall the machine did great and I'm pleased with how these welds turned out To get set up for stick welding you'll need to hook up your ground clamp and your electrode holder they use an end with a little nub on it and that's going to go into this hole here and you're going to twist and lock it. The orientation in which you connect these will depend on what you're welding and what your filler rod is. But if we're welding 6013 on steel, then that will be DC electrode positive. So we can go ahead and hook up our, our stick side to the positive side. And then our ground clamp can go on to the negative. From there we can clamp this to the part we're welding or the table and then we can insert our stick filler rod in here. There is a couple different grooves in there at different angles so you can hold the torch 
that way, straight, or going in that direction. I got my stick loaded up into my electrode. I'm going to do a practice pass like I could do with TIG welding. Make sure I'm in a smooth and comfortable position. Then when the machine's turned on, you can start the arc by striking it and then travel in the direction you need to go. I like to have a slight negative angle to it. This is opposite of TIG welding. And what this angle does is it helps to allow the slag that's produced in the stick welding process to float to the top and not get stuck in your weld pool. And then you're going to keep traveling along until you get to the end of your weld. And it's important to remember that this stick is a consumable and it's going to get shorter the longer you weld. So you're going to have to be feeding into the part as you travel in the direction you want to go. Art Captain also sent me this backpack. I really like this helmet pocket it has on the back here. This mesh one is nice and big to keep your helmet out of the way. And then there's lots of interior pockets. I got my welding jacket, hammer, brush, and some gloves in there for now. Some big water bottle pockets on the side. And I really like this little buckle here across the chest. That just helps to keep it on your, your body a little tighter. That concludes this quick start video on how to use your ArcCat and TIG 200 with stick welding capabilities. If you learned something, I hope you like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.